on this episode, I talk about what not to buy and what I learned from the Burbank Sports Cards interview. This is Dave, and welcome to the SVA Card Collectors Podcast. What is up? What is going on, everyone? David, SVA Card Collectors. I hope you enjoyed the interview on Monday with uh, Burbank Sports Cards, one of the biggest eBay stores in the world. I had a lot of fun. Um, before we get started, wanted to talk about a couple of things. One, um, my writer submission program. Guys, submit it for the week for the week for the month of July. Um, top prize will be fifty bucks. Second prize, the booby prize, will be a Tops Project Twenty Twenty. I have already posted one article yesterday. Head over to svacardcollectors.com. It's basically about you don't have to make money on all your cards. If you bought something and you see better deals and you haven't realized profits yet. Um, Don't be afraid to sell those cards and move on. Um, Good article. Really, really enjoyed reading it, and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Um, Again, as usual, please like, comment, share. really does help out Um, YouTube, basically every place that helps me out. Also, it gives me some insight on what you guys want to hear more and more. Um, I saw something in the news, and then we posted it on the SVA Card Collectors Facebook group um, about... CCG, trying to get into the um, grading world. Now, they are graders of comic books. Um, Right now, they are getting into um, Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards and that crap. Um, I don't know too much about it at all. I know there's tons of money to be made in that avenue, but I just don't know anything about it. Um, But they will be doing sports. They will be doing vintage. They will be doing modern. Um... I don't think they have any dates yet. Um, and from what I saw, now this was off of sportscollectorsdaily.com. That will be in the description below. Um, basically, they're saying they're going to get into the game. They're going to you know, do it right. They're saying all the, the right things. This can only help um, grading um, companies get better get cheaper, maybe get faster, because now you have PSA and BGS. Those are the top guys. SGC is running third. CCG is, um, they're a force to be reckoned with. They are a quality company. I mean, comic books, they are it. You know, everyone brings their comic books to CCG. So um, I know it'll be a little bit different because they don't do sports cards, but they know about grading. They know the grading world. They know. I'm pretty sure they're going to get into it with their eyes wide open. So I see this as being a benefit. Um, will um, true collectors or investors say, oh, I don't know. I don't. Uh, they look a little dorky on uh, the article. You know what they have looks a little like a kid's version of a graded card. Hopefully they change it up. Um, a little bit, but still, I, I, I think that is a positive. That is a huge positive. Um, and like I said, that article will be in the description. Just also the um, article submission, that stuff will also be in the description below um, if you want to get that going. Now, hmm, a lot of dead air. There's dead air because um, I want to slow it down a little bit. No. Um, the interview on Monday, there was one point that he made that really struck me. And one of the, you know, he talked about a lot of things, but I asked the question, hey, if you're starting out again, what is, you know, what's some things, some advice do you have for people? Um, and the thing that came right away was, he said, is focus. Um, I know starting off, I've said this many times, um, and I know other people who get back into it, they say the same thing. They are like a kid at a candy shop. They want to do all these different things because now they have money to buy the cards that they couldn't afford as a kid. And so they go into, you know, 80s cards. You know, they start to try to get those cards from, from the past that they couldn't afford. Um, then they go, well, I want to try these modern cards, these new cards. I want to get into, I want to buy all these different sets, um, that come out like every week and, and get involved with that. 
And then they go, oh, you know what? Vintage is the way to go because that's, I, I couldn't afford it back then, but now I got some money. I can do vintage. Um, oh, basketball. I love basketball. And so we're all doing different things. We, we you know, was, we're uh, praying and spraying or spraying and praying. I, I don't know. I don't remember what the, I don't even think that's the terminology. I think I just made that up. Um, but basically, you're all over the place. Um, as you start buying and collecting stuff, you start figuring stuff out where you like, um, you know, what you like and you start honing in on that, but that doesn't always happen. Just like myself, it really hasn't happened too much outside of 19, um, nineties, um, inserts. Um, I seem to be gravitating to that more and more, but right now I don't see the prices to be anything spectacular. Um, I think the prices rose a lot. And I'm just not seeing that many great buys. So I, I'm going to be looking for those cards probably November and December. Um, and, and that's where the focus comes in. If you figure out what you want to buy, what you want to invest in, or what you want to PC, and that's a, another conversation in itself. You know, what do you want to do? Are you just looking to make money? You want to start a, a card shop, you know, whether it be a brick and mortar or online, uh, do you just want to have a personal collection that you just want to, you know, have, do you want to flip, you know, you don't want to have a store or anything like that, but you want to flip to make some extra cash. Do you want to do a little bit of both? And so there needs to be some type of focus on what you want to, um, do. And once you figure out what you want to do, then I think you need to focus even further with regards to, all right, which cards do I want to go after? The, the only time I do well is when I focus. When I say, all right, I'm going to try to sell cards and I make that my focus or I put more attention to it, you know, it tends to work out. You know, I sold my, I'm going to see, I'm going to show... I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you guys on on this podcast. You see, Um, I sold my 71 Topps Thurman Munson for $350 PSA 7. I sold my 82 Topps Traded Cal Ripken BGS 9 for $235. I sold off the stuff that I got PSA 9s in. Topps Update Otani for 13. 89 Dunruss Randy Johnson PSA 9 for 13. Um, I've been pushing and pushing more and more on selling. Because I wanted that money in the bank. Um, with the 71 Thurman Munson, I bought it for 271 which I paid up for. Um, I didn't make that much money on it. And because A, I wasn't happy about the card. I wasn't so ecstatic about the card. Um, but I know someone else that, that would be. Um, the 82 Tops traded Cal Ripken. I always liked that card. I always wanted it. But I got it in a BGS 9. I didn't realize at the time. That was like one of the first cards I bought. I bought it for like a little bit over 100 bucks, And it doubled in price. I, I lucked out because of what's going on right now. Um, so focus on what you want to collect. Um, what you think is going to be. If, if you're looking just to, you know just have a PC, then just hone in on it, you know, watch YouTube videos, look at eBay listings, you look at eBay solds, um, and just immerse yourself in it. If you are all over the place, it will be much harder. If you're looking to do a bunch of different stuff, I would pick one and just study it for a while and then go to something else and then go to something else because... Um, immersion is the only way for me anyway, I've been able to, um, learn up on things when I don't immerse myself and I just am on the outside, I can even tell in the podcast and I'm sure people could tell as you listen to me talking about it, that I don't know a hundred percent everything about it. Like basketball cards, um, I really do research, but for whatever reason, I'm just not able to um, be as quick as I am on with baseball cards. And I, I don't know why. Maybe it's because maybe I don't watch basketball as much because the Knicks stink. 
and the Yankees are good, so I tend to watch them more, so I watch more of the teams that they're playing, so I know the plays a little bit better. Um, I can tell you this, in, in, you know, when I was collecting back in elementary school and junior high, I could tell you every single player and every single team. And I knew, you say a player, I knew where they played. So it's a big difference from now. I don't know. And it's even top players I don't even know. Um, it's just, it's not grasping. And I've done research, but I haven't immersed myself into it. And that comes with focus. And so it's really important to do that. Right now, my focus, if, if I'm starting out, do not, do not collect uh, buy any hobby boxes, jumbo boxes. I wouldn't even, I would stay away from blaster boxes because you can't find them. So I would not suggest to wait online, go to Target, fight with the, you know, the gentlemen with glasses that are a little heavyweight. And uh, <laughs> I, I just, it's just ridiculous. I'm not waiting in Target with eight different you know, guys there looking for a box of cards that I can get for 20 bucks so I can flip it for 40, 50 bucks. Let them do that. It's not worth it for me. My time's more expensive. Um, and maybe we'll get into that a little bit more on, on different podcasts. We'll talk about eBay. Um, I think that is something that more and more people are going to have to get into because with PayPal, with Venmo, with, with all these different pay apps, you're not going to be protected and you're going to have a work, you know, there's going to be a better chance of you getting scammed. And if you're just starting out um, and there's people that are coming into the hobby all the time, you're going to get hit. At least with eBay, you have some protection. I know people go, well, they don't really protect the seller that much. At least you're getting paid. <laughs> At least you get the money, you know? Um, so there's that. Um, or you get the cards. And if you don't get the cards, you, you get your money back. Whereas these other places, you ain't getting your money back. Um, and why I say um, hobby boxes and jumbo boxes to stay away from is because the prices are so astronomical right now. And it's just a pure gamble. Now, if you set money aside to buy cards because you like opening up packs, that's one thing. But even still... I would stay away from hobby. I would just go exclusively to retail. Um, and I would go to a candy shop, baseball card show, uh, baseball card shop, just buy it there. Um, it may be cheaper to buy it on eBay. Just check, the, you know, double check. I know on my, in my candy shop, um, the Indian fella, um, he gives me good deals. And uh, he doesn't give me great deals, but it's cheaper than eBay. Um it's like in the middle. It's more than retail, less than eBay. So if I need that box, I know he has it because he's like not too many people know that he has all this stuff. But I'm not cha I'm not going crazy. I'm not I'm not going in Target or Walmart anymore. If I go in there, I'll walk past. If there's anything, I'll buy it. If it's not there, it's not there. It's not worth my time. Uh, your time should be worth more than waiting online with six people. So you're going to be paying. Right now, I saw the, what was it? I Well, 2018 Top Series 1, I've been pushing that for a while now. It has pretty much doubled in value. It's $114. When I was telling you guys to buy it, it was at $65. Um, I would still buy that box um, instead of, 2020 top series two maybe series one i would buy instead of that i think it's the same elk because you have the guys that are in there that really no one knows too much about and in 2018 there are good rookies but they still need to prove themselves a little bit more but there are some crazy prices um that are coming out in pre-sale and it's just I'm, I'm just not having it i'm just not having it it's just not good um, Chrome, Topps Chrome Factory Sealed Hobby Box, $188. Um, 20, uh, 2020 Baseball Series 2 for a hobby box, $81. The only one I would say right now to buy if you want to open up and get some cards. The thing is, they're really, there's only Lewis Robert. There's another guy too. I don't even know their names. 
it doesn't really matter. Unless they start playing baseball, it's not going to matter. But I would say this. The, that is the type of box that maybe you buy one or two and you keep underneath your bed. Because if any of them do something good, if any of these rookie rookies actually play, because everybody in the mother is going to get sick with this coronavirus and it could be out for a couple of weeks, it might jump up. But even still, it's not at a crazy low price. Like Top Series, 2018 Top Series 1. I told you guys to buy it. It was $65. That was the time to buy it. You could have bought a, you know, a case and you would have had double your money right now. Um, there, I'm not seeing prices where they go, all right, this is really low. This is underpriced. This makes sense. This is just, I think, the way the price should be. It's just priced properly. Um, and I think once we hit that dip, that's when we'll have a problem. Tops Museum Collection, Factory Hobby, $250. Um, Bowman Chrome pre-sale, $250. There is no reason to be spending this much. And I don't think Bowman Chrome is going to be anything great this year. Um, just It's just right now, it, it's insane. I see Topps Pro Debut, 75 bucks. That might be something if you want to open. You know, you get two autographs in there and two relic cards. But again, it's just, I'm just not happy right now with box prices. And um, it just sucks. And that's why you're seeing the rise of prices on common cards as well. Not common cards, but just base cards because the boxes are so expensive, so they're trying to bring up the base. But eventually, those base cards are going to drop down because no one's going to remember what they bought these boxes for in two years. So there's that. Because I can guarantee... I, I don't know if I can guarantee it because it's crazy right now what's going on with sports cards, but I just don't see it. Um, sustaining this level. Um, I just don't. That's just me. Um, we'll see. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. Hopefully I'm, I'm wrong and it continues. Hopefully I'm wrong, but the wax prices do go down a little bit uh, because it's just pricing out a lot of people. It's just pushing the, just buy the cards that you want. So right now you have cards that are coming out, boxes that are coming out, you have Panini Absolute Baseball that's coming out today. Um, you have uh, Topps Archives Signature Series Retired Player Edition. You get one autograph in there. And then the following day, you have Panini Dunruss Elite Basketball. Again, I, I don't suggest you buy these cards. The boxes are too much money. Now, if you have the money and this doesn't bother you and you just want to open up some cards, then by all means... Go ahead. If you don't have the means and you are looking to use your money as best as possible, then just buy the cards that you want. I would suggest stick with flagship, stick with heritage for baseball. For basketball, you are looking at Prism. You're looking at Penny Select. You're looking at Dunruss Optic. And then there's other places for you to look. But then you have to do your own research and see what you you know what you like. I like Revolution, even though I haven't bought any of them. Those are like my favorite basketball cards. Um, football, you're in the same realm. You're in Panini Prism, uh, Panini Select, Dunruss Optic, um, National Treasures for basketball and and, and um, football is a lot more money. Um, stuff that I've been telling you guys for a while, but I just think it's really important that you focus on the cards that you want and buy them. Don't focus on gambling, which is what's in hobby boxes right now. Um, I don't think they're even good buys to store underneath your bed because A, if it was me, they would be opened, and B, they're just not at solid prices, you know, cheap prices. Because again, I don't think two, three, four years down the line, people are going to remember that these prices were very high. Um, that's just me. So, and I have a podcast, so... I can talk. And by the way, now Gary V has his own sports card podcast. I'm very excited about that. Jerk off. Um, <laughs> it has, uh, I saw Card Collector 2 was the only guy that I saw. He's a nice guy on Instagram. He's, he's pretty big on there. 
Um, yeah, whoop de doo good for them. They couldn't bring me along. They couldn't help a, a brother out. Ugh. Fine, I shall defeat them on my own. By slowly gaining, gaining attention. And in 20 years, then I shall have maybe at least a good hundred people to listen. But <laughs> besides the point. All right. It's that time of the show. SVACardCollectors.com. Head over there. There's some good articles. Um, you guys can comment on them. Don't say bad things. They do hurt my feelings. I'm very fragile. Or fragile, as they say. Download the Flick Chat app. Head over to my Facebook group. And guys, you know what to do. Buy some cards and go broke. Later. You've heard me talk about Starstock. They've been a sponsor of the show for a couple of months now. Well, now you can deposit, purchase cards, view in your collection, and flip those cards back on the marketplace with so much more to be built. Starstock is building a sports card marketplace aimed to be faster, cheaper for flipping sports cards than any other platform. They're currently looking for people who want to submit their cards to sell on this new platform. Here's what Starstock is offering. 5% commission, no ingestion fees. You send in the cards, they do all the work. Cards are guaranteed and secured in the vault. I've seen the little guy, his name is Pepe. He doesn't let anybody in and out. Um, you can choose cards to ship back to you at any time. You can buy, flip, store, or ship cards with a click of a button. If you're interested in getting involved and sending those cards, contact Mike at Mike at Starstock.com. Again, Starstock is only looking for rookie cards and our prospects of current players. Head over to Starstock.com.